Right, it's time for another radioactive experiment. What you can see here is a polished piece of pitch blender uranium ore. All those black loads you can see here are uranium ore. And due to being polished, this specimen is really nice for radiographies, as you can just put a flat film on it. And we'll see how that goes. So you can see, it looks really quite amazing. And it's very hot as well. Even by just placing my camera on it, you should be able to see the radiation. Can you see those little flashes there? That's quite nice, and it's just uh, through the lens of my camera. So there's quite a lot of shielding, but still, you can see it. Oh, you want to hear a screaming and Geiger counter as well? Yeah, I bet you do. So, here we go. Here's the Gamma Scout. At quite a distance, but it's hot as a sad. Now we should place that right on here. It's actually too annoying, so I'll turn off that click. I'll place it on here again. We get those rates of like... 700 to 800 usually. Even got close to 900 on some spot. So, um, yeah, 900 microsieverts an hour. But that, of course, includes beta radiation, but everything that got uh, through to the Geiger Miller tube will also get through to the film, so we'll see how that goes. And I will limit the exposure time to just four hours, because that should be sufficient. Now, this is an example of the setup I'm going to use. This is a tiny piece of old x-ray film. Of course, I cannot video this in the light, as the film would be exposed. So this is just an example using an old piece of film. I will use a larger piece of film in the actual experiment. And anyway, so um, I'll place the pitch blender right on there. Like this. And what you can see here on this side is an actual x-ray intensifying screen. That screen is supposed to uh, yeah, intensify X-rays by converting them to photons, to visible light photons, and exposing the film. It is used in, uh, in standard X-rays, so the patient receives a lower dose by having the same good image quality. This is a uh, green rare earth screen that is compatible with this uh, Kodak TMAT Panoclast X-ray film. So we'll see if that works, or if it's just made for certain X-ray energies and not the wide spectrum of the very hard gammas and betas and everything. So may maybe the shielding effects will actually be dominant rather than, uh, rather than the intensification of the exposure. We'll see. We'll also do a bare exposure, where the film is in direct contact with the pitch blender. And as opposed to the intensifying screen, here I also have a piece of just a normal piece of plastic and I will use to see um, if there's any difference between that and the intensifying screen. It has about the same thickness. So we'll see if there are any difference between those two at all. Or if they're just providing shielding and nothing else. So now I'm going to set this up in the dark room. But I'm not going to video it as I don't want to expose the film to more light than absolutely needed. However, I'll get back to you uh, for developing the film, where I'll try and video the actual process of developing it. Here I am developing the film under red light that is made for photographic laboratories, but uh, as you can see the film is turning black and that is not supposed to happen. So the film is sensitive to some kind of light emitted by that red lamp, which means I basically ruined the auto radiograph there. Oh well. This is another slide I developed without using any light, and you can see the radiograph on there. But the other one is pitch black, as it, it has been exposed by, well, some kind of light emitted by that lamp. So, yeah, I'm currently doing this again, another four hours of exposure, and then another development, this time in a different way. Okay, so apparently I had to do the experiment again for a third time. That's actually the developer went bad after the second time. And, well, this is actually a 20 hours exposure. And what you can see is the outline of the piece of plastic here. And, well, you can sort of make out the outline from the intensifying screen on this side. And you can see, um, 
like the big bit in the middle here that is just uh, where the film has been exposed to the pitch blender without any shielding and what we can see on this side where the plastic cover had been is that actually the plastic seemed to provide a larger amount of shielding than the intensifying screen where it appears to be darker as you can see and uh, I think this is due to the intensifying screen actually working a bit as an intensifier as it should it is in theory uh, more dense because plastic is basically just hydrogen and carbon and the intensifying screen also contains rare earth uh, elements which are pretty heavy elements as you know so this should in theory provide better shielding but yeah it seems to be the other way around so that means the intensifying screen actually did work as an intensifying screen somewhat even for the many different energies of gamma and probably beta radiation of uranium ore but the best exposure still seems to be done by just a bare pitch blender uranium ore exposed to the film you can see there's a little fogging basically all around the film and that is because of stray radiation you can see here's a bit of unexposed film and compared to the film where the uranium ore has been on this is much more see-through uh, blue color while this is more gray so yeah that's all stray radiation you can see here you can even see it originating from spots like this but yeah you can see it's very thick due to the long exposure so here's a four hours exposure where you can see the fine outline much better than in the other image again this is the four hours exposure and this is the twenty hours exposure of exactly the same piece so probably about three to four hours is ideal for seeing uh, the well-defined loads in there and twenty hours just produces a really thick image from all that radiation so it'd be like this you can see this bit here and recognize it here so you can see what a longer exposure did to the film also there's a lot less stray radiation on this picture you cannot really see all that much stray you can see a bit of stray radiation here a bit of fogging there but by, by far not as bad as this way you can see stray radiation coming up from the uranium ore just like this on the edges here also this is an autoradiograph of the same piece of pitch blender on a very insensitive uh, photographic paper the exposure time was two days and as you can see it's about as well exposed as it is on this film on this x-ray film where it was exposed for four hours so yeah it's quite amazing to see how sensitive this x-ray film is compared to the photographic paper